Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here and today we're talking about what are the best lenses for wildlife photography. Now, when you're getting started in wildlife photography, it's often a question that people ask is what lens they should get hold of. And there's a huge amount of like literature out there about certain lenses and saying that they're really good. And a lot of the time, um, it's just people recommending certain lenses because they want to make money off them. And for me, you know, I want to give you some like sound advice for investing long term in your wildlife photography because I think that that's the way to go. If you're going to spend money, spend money on something that's going to last a long time because it just makes sense. Now, what do you need as a wildlife photographer? Well, you can shoot wildlife photography on your 18 to 55 mil kit lens, and we'll talk about that in the future. But a lot of the time, you're going to want a telephoto. You're going to want something at least 200 millimeters or more in order to create portraits of wildlife. It just allows you to isolate them within a certain frame, to bring them a little bit closer and fill your um, fill your frame with your subject. Um, and of course, you know, for me. I personally use a 300mm 2.8 VR2, um, but I know this lens is £4,000 and for a lot of people that's not going to be something that they can pick up. So what should you get started with? Well, when I was getting started, um, I had a 70 to 300mm lens and it was like, uh, 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 and it's focusing and to be honest, it was just a bit crap. And I probably would say if you can avoid one of those, save up a bit of money and, and go for something that I would call an investment lens. Now an investment lens is a lens that you're going to buy now and you're probably going to keep for a good five years or so, maybe even more. Um, it's just going to be something that's a staple in your kit bag, you're going to learn how to use it and it's just going to always be there when you need it. Now for wildlife photography as a telephoto, what are you going to go for? What are those staple lenses? Well. Sadly, it's probably not going to be something that's super telephoto to start with. Maybe something like a 70 to 200. Um, the reason I'd recommend a 70 to 200 is quite simply it is a lens that pretty much every photographer, professional photographer on the planet, has in their kit bag because it's brilliant. It is so versatile, it is so flexible, it is sharp, it is just a top end performer. The flexibility means you can do wildlife in the landscape, 70 mil or you can zoom in at 200 mil and do some portraits. Yes, I know 200 mil isn't close enough necessarily for little birds and stuff like that, but in terms of an investment lens, it's great. Um, also, it's a 2.8 aperture. That means you can work in low light. It means that the autofocus is like so, so, so quick. It just blows your mind every time you use it. Um, and it comes with all the latest features, your VR and stuff like that, so you can handhold it. And, and quite honestly, it's just a top quality bit of glass. You can also add a 1.4 teleconverter on the back to give you even more reach, and that's really handy when you're getting started. And if you use a DX camera, say you've got something like a D7000 or anything like that, this is gonna give you the equivalent focal length of actually 100 to 300 mil that is like perfect for wildlife photography. And that is why I would recommend that 7200 is something you definitely think about investing in. Now, of course, there's still an expensive lens to pick up new, so go second hand. There are a huge number of these available on the used market. If you're a Canon or a Nikon shooter, um, you can pick the older version up of this um, that's slightly softer in the corners, but it's still a stunning bit of kit. Um, you can get those for like £700, and that's a cracking investment because you're just going to use it for a long, long time. And still, you use your 70 to 200 every day. Even when you're a professional and have absolutely every bit of kit at your disposal, it's still a lens that I reach for pretty much 50% of the time. So it's definitely a great investment. Now, if you want something longer, if you do want to go um, in order to create more flattering shots um, in terms of portraits and you really want to isolate your subject, 300 mil is, is really where you're going to want to start. Um, and a couple of lenses that are definitely worth thinking about are the 300 f4 and the 100 to 400 or the 80 to 400 if you're a Nikon shooter. The 100 to 400, 80 to 400 offers the flexibility. It offers the ability to, you know, pull back or move in close to give you a real sort of range and different type of images that's great if you just want to have one lens that does it all it's also reasonably quite lightweight it's not too heavy not too bulky you can travel with it pretty much anywhere in the world um, and it's just a great flexible lens 
The only problem is it doesn't have the best aperture in terms of getting those really nice out of focus areas. Um, and of course the autofocus is a touch slower than something like a 2.8 lens or one of the uh, Super Telephoto Primes. Now another lens that is definitely worth the consideration is that of the 300mm f4. Um, I personally had a 300mm f4 before I got the 2.8 lens and they are stunning. They're just so good. Um, being a prime lens, they are engineered and have excellent sharpness. Um, the f4 aperture means you can get really stunning out of focus areas, you can render beautiful bokeh, and also they have a really good close focus, especially the older Nikon version. Uh, the 300 f4 AFS non VR um, could focus all the way down to 1.5 meters, that was just beautiful in terms of rendering bokeh and out of focus areas it's just great for that it's also a really good lens for dragonflies or anything like that as well um, and these are available at great prices you can pick up a used 300 f4 in great condition um, for like 500 pound there's an absolute steal um, and if you have a decent tripod you learn to you know make sure your shutter speed is always above 500th of a second or a thousand you are going to use that lens and create some really beautiful pictures you know get it keep it in the kit bag learn how to use it and it will really improve your photography again another benefit of using the prime over the zoom is it's going to teach you how to work with prime lenses. And that's especially helpful if eventually you do move up to getting something like a 300mm 2.8 or a 500 f4 if you wanna do more birds. It's just gonna train you with the skills of how to get yourself in the right position, how to move, how to really frame up and create different pictures. Um, and that's a skill that is just so beneficial for you as a photographer going forward. Again, these lenses that I'm suggesting are investments. They're things that are gonna help you long-term and you're not gonna use them for a year and go, uh, the quality is a bit off in the corners. Oh, damn, it's not very good. Oh, the focus is slow, anything like that. These lenses are just great investments long term for anyone getting into their wildlife photography. Now, moving away from telephotos, because you don't always need a telephoto for wildlife images. A lot of the time, actually, the best images are created on wide angles because they just show the landscape as well. They put the subject in the environment. Now, when choosing a, uh, a wide angle, um, you've got quite a few options. Um, ranges from like the 16 to 35, 14 to 24, you've got the 24 to 70, you've got prime lenses, all different things. But there's a few key things you want to look out for in terms of the actual attributes of the lens. Now, firstly, for me, is the close focus. The 24 to 70 is not a lens that I would always use for wide angle wildlife pictures. Um, there's certain subjects that it's fine with if they're rather large, you know, like an elephant or something like that. This will do a stunning job. A bear, anything like that, this will do a stunning job because quite honestly, they're big animals and even at 24 mil, if you're at a reasonable distance, you're gonna be able to get them as a sizable um, part of your image that's gonna create a really nice shot. But largely for smaller stuff, for birds, anything like that, the close focus at 38 centimeters just isn't good enough. Um, and that's why really I put this down and then I switch over to my 20 mil prime. Now my 20 mil is, you know, a prime lens, so it's fixed. I have to move in and out and in and out to get my composition right. And again, just like with a 300 mil, that just makes you a better photographer. It allows you to learn the skills of how you're gonna position, where you're gonna position. It means that you've gotta think about your composition a lot more than just zooming in and out. But the biggest reason that the 20 mil is great is the close focus. This focuses all the way down to 0 0.2 of a meter. Um, and that is from the focal, um, from the sensor in the camera, so it's like, about that far from the end of the lens. And it is perfect for all kinds of different wildlife in the landscape shots, even like kind of semi-macro things like uh, butterflies and stuff like that. But for me, in the Falklands, I love this, working with the penguins. I can have a penguin here, get all the background, you know, just so great. And additionally, being a prime lens, it is super, super, super sharp that for me is such a key thing. And again, you know, it's pretty small and lightweight. That means that if I'm carrying quite a lot of gear already, it's not something too much extra that I've got to add to the bag. If I was to add something like a 16 to 35, that's another big heavy lens to add to my kit. And to be honest, I don't want to carry too much all the time. Um, and the 20 mil is just great. Additionally, one of the things with these lenses is autofocus speed isn't necessarily that important. When you're working with a wide angle, you're going to often be working in manual focus because you'll often remote trigger in order to allow your subject to get close to your camera. But a lot of the time what you'll do is manually focus the set, 
probably somewhere between F8, F11, and a lot of the time I'll actually just stick this ring down with a piece of gaffer tape so I know it's not gonna move and you know knock my focus out. So autofocus speed isn't always something that's mega key with a wide angle. And quite honestly, the 18 to 55 mil kit lens that comes with pretty much every camera you can buy on the planet is still a brilliant lens for wildlife photography, especially wide angle. And I'm gonna be doing a video on how to create wildlife pictures with just the basic kit uh, in a little while. But yeah, you know, don't despair if you don't have loads of money to spend on gear. You can get great shots just with the basic gear um, that comes with your standard camera. Now, moving away from the wide angles, moving away from the telephotos, what if you're interested in bugs? Well, you're gonna want a macro. Now, a macro lens is really defined as a lens that allows you to get fully one-to-one -one reproduction ratio uh, with your subject. And that means that if something is this big, when you photograph it one-to-one, -one, it will be that big on the sensor. And that's fantastic if you wanna work with tiny little critters, uh, any insects, stuff like that, flowers, plants, and you wanna get those details and intricate shots, a macro is what you want. But there's a couple of things you need to think about when purchasing a macro lens. And above anything, is probably the focal length. Now, the focal length pretty much determines how close you're gonna to have to be to your subject to get that one-to-one -one reproduction. Now, if you use a 60 mil macro lens, that is quite often the cheaper version, you have to get um, about two and a half inches from your subject. Now, if that's a dragonfly or something like that, it's gonna fly away a lot of the time, unless you're out really early in the morning when it's pretty much can't move, um, it will just fly away. So that's why the 100 mil or maybe even a 200 mil is a far better lens to invest in. I personally went for the 100 mil because it's the best compromise in terms of weight, size, performance, and giving me roughly a 40 centimeter uh, distance that I can work from my subject that is adequate for most of the things I do. I don't do a huge amount of macro, but when I do, this is absolutely brilliant. It's a super sharp lens. Again, being a prime lens, the engineering and the optics are brilliant. Uh, this one has vibration reduction as well. That isn't necessary when you're doing macro because pretty much 90% of the time you'll be on a tripod to ensure that you get those really sharp images. And of course the autofocus isn't necessarily that important because you're gonna to want to be manually focusing a lot of the time just to ensure you really get that perfect sharpness and focus where you want it to be. Now, if you are mega interested in your bugs and stuff and you want to get into macro, certainly look at buying a proper dedicated macro lens. But if not, and you want to kind of get into macro but don't spend too much money, there are other options. You can get extension tubes that could work with something like a 7200 mil. They go between the back of the lens and the camera, and all they do is they reduce the close focus distance of your lens, eventually getting you to a point where you can get those close up images and semi macro shots. Um, with like a 50 mil with a full set of extension tubes, you can get down to probably nearly one to one. If you want to do true macro, however, you are going to want to invest in a proper macro lens at some point. Now, I hope that's given you a good overview of the different lenses and types of things that we use in wildlife photography. Um, if you have any questions about lenses, gear, anything you're thinking about buying but you're not too sure, drop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you more than happy to answer your like, specific questions on lenses and stuff like that. If there's like overarching themes that a lot of people wanna know about, I'll do another video about it. But thank you very much. If you enjoyed this, drop us a like and subscribe for more wildlife photography content. I'll be back soon with another video, so join me then. Thank <laughs> you.